What's up, everybody? Your favorite man with an ultra ball has written a book. It's called My Very Happy Life, and it details my journey living with my rare cancer diagnosis known as Von Hippel Lindau disease. I want the book to inspire you and encourage you to reach for your dreams, and the best part is half of all profits are going to support the VHL Alliance in order to help raise awareness on VHL. Link to my book is in the description. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32, here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even higher the 1100 ladder all of our new subscribers from that zelda video are probably gonna be like what the hell kind of video is this yeah i'm, I'm a yugi tuber so hi <laughs> so anyway i want to talk about uh another tier list specifically for hand traps i know that we're kind of getting to the end of this format we're probably going to be getting a new balance hopefully sometime soon there are things like cash tier and sprite that need to be reeled in to a degree um so i figured it would still at least be good to do a balance for this sort of interim season for lack of a better term you know the kind of in between point between you know the end of this format and getting a new balance plus we also have cyberstorm access so there is a lot to take in uh moving forward into this interim middleman format so of course we've got the broken that's going to be the tier that where i mean you should be playing these cards if you're not i don't know what you're doing and then we have the i mean it's i tier this is like hand traps that could see like maybe some side deck play or something or maybe just kind of more specifically good for certain matchups depending on what deck you're playing and then rogue is like the more niche category thing like okay maybe you'll play this if you're playing like a rogue deck and then of course we have our patented booty booty butt cheek category you should not be playing these hand traps if they're in this category i'm gonna go ahead and put chaos hunter right in here because this isn't a fucking hand trap so i don't know why this is here um <laughs> anyway i i could be wrong um but yeah no this is uh this is not no hand trap at all in the slightest um so let's just dive on into this here um starting off with droll and lockbird so droll and lockbird is absolutely busted this format it completely shuts down purely depending on how they open if they don't open optimally then it really does shut them down um super heavy samurai can also really shut them down i mean they're an all monster deck so they can't play things like call by the grave they can't play things like cross up designer um they have to rely on like their ciphering gear gammas right um which speaking of which can also go in the broken category if you don't mind playing three gammas with the brick of a driver especially if you're playing something like purely then cyframe gear gamma is going to be absolutely busted especially now that we have excel synchro stardust dragon um it allows cyframe gear gamma to not be as bad going first because you know if you're playing a deck like purely sky strike or whatever where you have to play cards that don't commit monsters to the field i.e. spell cards uh, if the opponent tries to ash you or even droll you uh you can just say fuck you gamma you can drop out those two you can make the excel synchro stardust dragon because that's a level eight use the excel synchro stardust to get back the gamma and now you have an instant baron de fleur for no extra charge ladies and gentlemen so droll is amazing being able to shut down search um and also just really being able to basically be a pass turn type of card you know you're playing against purely if they don't have enough gas they're gonna have to pass turn same goes for super heavy samurai to a lesser degree branded i have drilled branded several times and depending on their hand they're able to kind of play through it um and then of course that's why everybody's playing gamma because you know if you haven't committed any monsters to the board and you try to draw them things and say well i'm just gonna gamma you now bitch so these two are absolutely fantastic uh going into this format uh, let's see. Let's jump around a little bit. You know what? Let's go and talk about Fantamaze. So, Fantastical Dragon Fantamaze. If the new Salamangrate that is rumored, I think it's rumored, or I think we are getting new support. If that turns out to be good, <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight fucking face. <laughs> it's booty booty butt cheeks, ladies and gentlemen. Why are you playing Fantamaze? Why are you worried about Link monsters? You don't need to be worried about that. You don't need to play this against Math Mech. It does dick all against Math Mech. Fantamaze is garbage. Don't don't be playing uh, Fantamaze. It's booty booty butt cheeks. Uh, token collector. Why are you worried about Sword Soul in 2023? Token collector is garbage now. Ally of Justice. Why? Are, no, you belong down here, Sugar Boo Bear. Uh, what are you worried about with this card? This card's garbage. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Skullmeister. Sk so, Skullmeister, I was going to put in the booty booty butt cheek category, but I feel like Skullmeister will always be one of those rogue picks just because of how specific it is. It will always have sort of a niche in almost any deck that uh, can be played in a format. You know, obviously not every meta deck will play Skullmeister in every single format, but regardless, it is 
something that you can pick as a more niche pick, something more rogue, you know, hence why it says rogue. Um, it's, I feel like it will always have a place as like a rogue pick. Like it's never going to be bad. It's never necessarily going to be absolutely amazing unless it just counters like the main deck in a format. Um, so yeah, I, I got to give props to Skullmeister. It, it comes and goes, you know, ebbs and flows with the tides of life, I guess. Um, let's see here. So infinite impermanence, infinite permanence is fantastic. I mean, like it, it it's a better version of Valor. Like, it can't get called by. You can only cross out it. Um, you can't ash it like you can to Gamma. I don't know why you'd be fucking ashing a Gamma, but, I mean, depending on your board state, I guess. And, like, just Imperm's amazing. It, I don't know how else to describe it. Like, it's so good. It doesn't trigger talents. Um, if you set it and activate it and your opponent's an idiot, uh, then you lock out a column in their back row, and then they activate in that column. It's like, well, you screwed now, Sugar Boo Bear. Um, especially like if you set this against super heavy samurai and you set it in a pendulum scale and then they try and play a card in that scale, or they really need that scale for a reason. Ha <laughs> ha. It's even better. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a reason why this card was 60 to $70 when it first came out as a secret rare, fantastic card, uh, D shifter. So I'm going to put it in the it's I tier because obviously not every deck can play it. I've seen some purely decks playing shifter and I'm just like, why? Like, I don't know if you're a masochist or what. I understand the concept behind it, especially in like the OCG where I think like D shifter is at one because you want to be able to have that ability to lock out the graveyard on the opponent's turn. Then when it comes back to you, depending on how you open, you can just like summon purely, excavate the top three, maybe get a card, use the effect to attach a purely quick play from your hand and like stuff never really has to go to the grave. But that's really fucking specific that I just don't feel like it's worth playing in that regard. Like, I'd rather be side-decking Ash. Um, Shifter, though, in decks like Kashtira and Flunder is amazing. Being able to shut down purely, basically make them just pass their turn depending on how they open. Um, Branded can even... I've seen some builds playing D-Shifter because they kind of don't really care about their grave depending on, again, on how they open because those first five cards are just so important. But being able to use Lubelion to get your banished stuff back into the deck... For the five tier element players that may be running around in your area of the world, it shuts them down. Like, Shifter is just a fantastic card. Um, let's see. Ash. I'm actually going to put it in the It's I tier. I feel like it's more for, like, rogue decks, right? Like, if you're going against, like, I don't know, a fucking Vernalizer Fairy Machine and Finitrack Dog Water deck, it's going to shut that deck down because... Rogue decks get hurt so bad by things like Ash because they usually need that first card that they play to get their engine going to go through. And if it gets Ash, then they're just going to lose. Fun fact, uh, really quick, I also want to point out too with Droll and Shifter, something I found out today. Um, keep in mind that, like, let's say the opponent searches a card and you're able to Droll them and you have Shifter in hand. You activate the Shifter first on Chin Link 1 and then you chain the Droll. And then once the chain resolves, then the macro effect of shifter will, will activate. So in response to the shifter, you can still chain other cards. So you can chain the droll. Therefore, the opponent loses their grave for basically all that for two turns, all their turn, all the next turn. And then they can't search off a droll. That's really specific, but it's really good to know in case that ever comes up. So anyway, I just thought that that was something good to uh, point out. Uh, next up here is Lancia. Uh, it's it's rogue. I, I don't really know why you'd be playing Lancia. It's it's good. Don't get me wrong. I just I don't think it's really all that needed. Like maybe for the buy steals, which the buy steals aren't pictured here. Um, but I would still just put them in rogue because they're just really specific. I still think Magnum needs to go to one. That card's fucking bananas. Um, I'm gonna put Ogre in I because it is good against purely. But the thing is, is that it's only good if they don't have happy memory. Because if they chain happy memory to protect their monster from being destroyed by card effects, then the ogre's useless, and all you did was possibly turn on the triple tactics talent. Or if they're not playing talents, you just wasted a hand trap. So I respect ogre for what it is. I just I think it's losing a lot of value once people realize, oh shit, if they have happy memory, this card's garbage. Uh, so yeah. Next up is Nibiru. I still think Nibiru is good. Um, depending on what a ban list will bring, this may drop down. Um, because pure, <laughs> I've said this before, purely don't give a fuck about Nibiru, especially if they have straight purely street and my friend purely, if you nib them, cool. Thank you. They're going to make their noir summon number five, especially if they have both those cards up. They're most likely going to be able to get to five materials on a purely exceed. Then if you Nibiru them, you can't Nibiru the noir. So 
Like, what are you Nibiruing? My purely? Okay, thank you. Like, I don't care. Or, like, if I don't have the noir established? Okay, thank you. My straight purely street's gonna get me back a purely. I'm gonna excavate three more. And then my friend purely is gonna get three of my quick play spells back to my hand. I lost no advantage. In fact, I pretty much just plussed. So thank you for giving me a useless token that I'm probably just gonna, you know, send off with, like, I don't know, purely pretty memory. Um, let's see here. Spooky Dogwood is basically just for time. It's whatever. No material is booty, booty, ass cheeks. It's garbage. Uh, Moonlit Chill. No one's playing Moonlit Chill. Just play Valor. Valor is, uh, I'm going to put in the It's All Right tier. Like, it, it's cool. I feel like Imperm is just starting to outshine it a bit. DD Crow's Rogue. I don't really know what you're crowing other than in the purely matchup. You can crow the quick play spells. Um, that's cute. I feel like you're better off maybe playing Floodgates, but you do you, boo-boo. Ghost Bell. Ghost Bell's rogue. It'll always kind of be there. Similar to Skullmeister. Winter Cherries is rogue. Like, yeah, you can do things like, okay, I'm going to cherries your noirs. Like, okay, cool. But why? I, I feel like that there are better options than using cherries, especially if you're a purely player and, like, you want to get rid of the opposing noir. I feel like you have better options. Like, you have things like Santa Claus and Kurokara, which they're not on here because they're board breakers. Uh, Kurokara acts like a lava golem. It's not an activated effect like Nibiru. Um, I just feel like that there's better options besides the winter cherries. Like, I tried cherries in purely, and it just, it never went off. I'm, I was really, I was really disappointed by cherries. I'm actually kind of surprised it's not better than I thought. Herald of the Orange Light is really specific. I mean, if you're playing Drytron, cool. And if for some reason you're playing the one of in tier, cool. Um... It's, it's just kind of whatever. Like, it's, if you're not playing Drivetron, then why are you playing this card? So, yeah, it's a bit lopsided, actually, now that I look at this with everything being done. Like, it's... Like, you could be side-decking or main-decking Ash. Depending on your deck, you could be main-decking Shifter. And, like, like all these here in the It's Eye tier, you could maybe be main-decking. It just depends on your deck or even side-decking. But I feel like the main three that you're going to want to be playing is Droll, Gamma, and Imperm to some sort of degree, whether it's in your main or your side, because Droll is just going to win you ball games, ladies and gentlemen. I understand not everybody's going to want to play the Bricks with Gamma, but man, you got to somehow figure out a way around these cards then, because these are going to be pushing your shit in if you're not ready. Like, your boo-boo stain is going to get pushed up real far if you ain't ready for these three cards especially. But yeah, really lopsided. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. I didn't think it'd be this lopsided. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.